Today we will talk about troubleshooting Wi-Fi issues. We will use a Comtran WR6895 router in our demo. This is the same router that we lease or sell with our fiber deployments. The NL3120 that we lease with our faster DSL will have the same Wi-Fi options. The older Comtran routers will have fewer tools for troubleshooting and I will try and point out the differences. Let's log into the router. The default address is 192.168.1.1 Go ahead and press enter. And it's going to prompt us for a username and password. They are both user, lowercase. We're going to click OK. And now we're logged into the router. The first thing that we're going to look at is station info. And this is if you click on device info, wireless, and station info. This tells us the devices that are connected to the Wi Fi, their signal strength, and the band that they are connected to. The first piece of information that we're going to look at is the MAC. Now the MAC right here stands for Media Access Control. So now you can impress your friends with another fancy acronym. But in simple terms, the MAC is a unique number assigned to your device, at least the network portion of your device. The first six characters tell us who made the device, and the last six are kind of like a serial number. The first device that we see up here, we're going to look at that MAC. So we're going to do a copy of those first six characters, copy them. And then I've got found a website called macvendors.com that will tell us the vendor of the MAC address. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in, and we see this is made by Intel. So now we're going to go ahead and do it for the second device. We're going to do a copy, and we're going to go here and paste it in, and we see that second device is made by Apple. So now we know who makes these two devices that we see authorized. To further narrow down the device, let's look at the device under the DHCP info. So we're going to click over here on DHCP, DHCP version 4, and here we'll, we see three devices that have been connected and have a, an internet address. And so we noted from the previous page that this first device was this MAC address right here and that says Brat's laptop. That's also a device that was made by Intel. And the second device over on the on the wireless info page was this one here and that one says Brad's iPhone. So we know that it's Brad's laptop and Brad's iPhone. Now one of the things that um, it may be that this host name is left blank or it can be ambiguous. You don't really know what it is. The other thing you can do is find the MAC address or find the IP address here on your device and match it up with a MAC address over here. That is beyond the scope of this video, but it can be done. Now let's go back to the wireless uh, station info and look at the rest of the fields. So we've clicked here on Station Info. The associated and authorized fields, they're yes. If there are no or anything else, this probably means the device, the, the password when you logged in to the, gave it the wireless password, was incorrect. So what you need to do is disconnect and try to reconnect with the proper password. The next thing we see is the SSID, and this is the actually wireless network that you connected to. Now this particular COM trend has two different networks on it, or two different uh, frequency bands. It operates in the 2.4 that we see right here, and the 5 gigahertz right here. So it's possible that you can have, in my case, my laptop is connected to the 2.4, and my iPhone is connected to the 5 gigahertz. Now my laptop can only connect to the 2.4 because that's it's, it's an older device and that's all it will support. My iPhone could be connected to the 5 or the 2.4. We recommend that you connect to the 5 whenever possible because the 5 will give you, it has less interference and has faster speeds generally. Uh, the disadvantages of the 5 are that it's the distance is not quite so great with them. The 2.4 is a little bit has better range and not every device supports the 5. This next field you see here, the RSSI, stands for Receive Strength Signal Indicator. And this is just a numeric value of the of the strength of the signal. The lower the negative number, 
the better the signal. So you see my laptop has a minus 53 and my iPhone has a minus 66. And even though they're sitting right next to each other, that's kind of to be expected. The laptop will have a, a stronger, it can use more power to power the, the Wi-Fi than the phone. If you think about that, the phone is battery powered. They're, they want to conserve battery power. They want your phone to last as long as possible. And it doesn't have as much real estate for a, a good antenna. So I kind of expect the phone to have a little weaker signal than the laptop. Um, numbers here to, you know, 50 is really good, 60 is pretty good. Uh, if you get into 70s, it's a mediocre. 80s is kind of a poor signal, and 90 is really poor. The last thing over here is a signal strength. That's kind of like the bars. And you see here we have five bars. If it's blue, then, I'll, then that's a good strong signal. So that we have good strong signals on both of these devices. Also, be aware that devices with weak signals can affect the performance of other devices in your home. The weak signal devices are slow talkers, and your fast talkers will need to wait until the slow talkers finish before they can talk. We also talked about the older Comtrend routers. The older Comtrend routers are not going to have the RSSI and signal strength, so you're going to have to de basically depend on the bars on your phone or device to, s to determine the signal strength. Next, click, we're going to click on the site survey here, and we're going to click on the 2.4, and it takes it a, a few seconds to do the site survey. And here we see a number of devices. We see a couple in channel 1, one in channel 2, one in channel 7, a couple on channel 8, and a whole bunch on channel 11 over here. And the blue one happens to be our device. So now we go down here and look at the signal strength. And so we look at the signal strength of all these that are on channel 11. And we see some that have pretty weak signals, some that have some strong signals here. And so in this case, there is another device on channel 11 that might be causing some interference with my device. So I might want to consider changing the channel. The other thing we need to be aware of is the channel numbers. We really only should use channel 1, 6, and 11. If we use anything in between, those will interfere with the adjacent channels. For example, these, this channel 7 and this channel 8 here will interfere with 6 and 11. So there's not a whole lot you can do about it unless you know who your neighbors and you can go ask them nicely to change. And so we got somebody here with a net gear that's that's being bad and somebody here that's default, whatever default is that's being bad. That default's a strong signal, so it's probably here in our office. Next we'll look at the five gigahertz, and this will do a site survey of those five gigahertz devices that can be seen. And here we see that ours is on channel forty eight. There's a couple others on channel forty four and, and forty. Now I expect to see fewer devices in the 5, but that's going to change as more and more devices became, become capable of doing the 5 gigahertz. The nice thing about the 5 gigahertz is that there are more channels that we can use and it, the range isn't quite as far, so your neighbors aren't going to interfere with you quite so much. The last thing I want to look at is the channel settings. So we're going to go here and it's under advanced setup and you go to wireless and we're going to go to the 2.4 then we're going to click on advanced now here it's telling us that we're on channel 11 it's set for auto and it's saying we're currently on channel 11 and the interference is acceptable that means it's it's okay with the interference the other option would be interference severe if you see interference severe you can try changing the channel here or I would recommend just turning the power off and then back on on the router and the next time it comes up it will search for the cleanest channel and hopefully go to that. In this case I would probably think that channel 1 would be a little bit better than 11 and I would assume that if we turned this off and then back on that it would come up with channel 1. So now we're going to go over here and look at the 5 gigahertz and the channel settings are actually under the basic right here and it's set for auto and here's the different channels you have with, with 5. 
and under the advanced if you do have issues with the five we can go to the advanced there's this bandwidth setting and this basically controls the the speed of the of the Wi-Fi. Then you know you could have if it's 80 megahertz, the theoretical speed is over a gigabyte per second. If you cut it down to 40, it might jump down to 600 or 300. If you jump down to 20, it might go down to 150. That that's the theoretical speed. But if you're having issues, um, my view is is that a connection that's a 50 meg connection that's working great would will probably be better for you than a 1 gig connection that's dropping off all the time. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.